You know, we don't live in the healthiest country today. We have an epidemic of obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart and stroke, as well as increased rates of cancer. And I bet you don't know that we could wipe 30% of all these diseases right off the face of the earth if we just ate differently. If you try to eliminate all the good stuff, it's not going to taste very good. So you got to keep the good stuff in there, but know how much to work with and find substitutions. So let's say, for instance, cream sauces. Well, we all love cream sauces. I mean, if you pour cream over anything, it's going to taste delicious. But try to take it away, it won't taste as good. So what I do is instead of using whipping cream, which is 35% milk fat, that's enough to clog your arteries by just saying it, I found a great solution. I use 2% evaporated milk. This wonderful canned product is milk, but it's thickened because it's evaporated. I mix it with a stock, like a chicken stock, a beef stock, or a vegetarian stock, thicken it with some flour or cornstarch, and then to that add my flavors. So let's just say macaroni and cheese sauce, okay? I'll do that basic, and then I'll add grated Parmesan, cheddar cheese, Swiss, whatever, to make a wonderful fettuccine Alfredo sauce. I'll add my garlic, I'll add some beautiful sweet peas, grated Parmesan, but I'm eliminating the butter and the cream by doing it mushroom sauce. Saute a bunch of mushrooms, add it to the evaporated milk and stock. Fabulous substitute and much, much lower in calories and fat. And then we talk about dressings. Well, dressings on salads or pastas or rice dishes tend to be really high in calories because of the amount of oil we use. Now, even though you use a heart-healthy oil like a canola oil or an olive oil, oil is still extremely high in calories. So it may be great for your heart, it's not so great for your hips. So what I like to do is reduce the amount of oil in my dressings. But again, reducing it, if you take it away, you've got to replace it with something. If not, it will be too dry. So here's some of my substitutes, for instance. I'll take a traditional half a cup of oil and immediately reduce it to three tablespoons. And what do I substitute it with? Things like orange juice concentrate from the frozen. Not orange juice because it wouldn't have enough flavor. Apple juice concentrate, cranberry juice concentrate works well. Then I'll add a little bit of a flavored vinegar, balsamic, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar really works well. And then to that, my garlic, my seasonings. And that's one of the key ways of reducing the fat and still add in a couple tablespoons of a good quality oil, like a nice olive oil. Now, butter is probably one of the worst fats because it's a total saturated fat. I mean, I still love a little butter on my toast in the morning, but in terms of baking and cooking, we have to get away from using that half a cup to whole cup of butter. So in any recipe that calls for butter, I can immediately use canola oil. So let's say the cake calls for half of a cup of butter. I can reduce that to a quarter of a cup of canola oil and replace the remainder with ingredients such as light sour cream, light yogurt, ricotta cheese, even things like ripe banana, puree that, applesauce, cooked date puree works well, but I always keep some oil in there. And one of our favorite desserts has to be an all-time favorite, cheesecake. But cheesecake is almost always made with 35% cream cheese. That's really a heart stopper. So how do you get that decadent taste? I use ricotta cheese. It comes in 5 to 10% milk fat, considerable saving from 35% milk fat. I then combine that with a little bit of light cream cheese. So the ratio is about 75-25. 75% ricotta, 25% light cream cheese. I have light sour cream in, instead of the regular high fat sour cream. I reduce the eggs from three down to two eggs. Thicken it with a little bit of flour, add flavorings in if it's going to be a New York style cheesecake, loads of lemon juice, lemon peel, vanilla extract, and you have a sensational, rich tasting cheesecake. Rose Reisman's A Complete Light Kitchen is now my 17th book. I've taken some of my favorites but updated them, improved them, made them quicker for the home cook. Everything's nutritionally analyzed with prep times, make ahead times, so you really know what you're getting into, as well as 25% new recipes, again, based on new food trends today, and also looking at many ethnic varieties. So I'll have Mexican favorites, Mediterranean, Italian, Asian influence. I mean, it's really a wonderful book if you want to cross all cultures. Some of the foods I've brought on to show you today. One is a classic wrap. Now, wraps are great, but we're not always sure what goes into our wraps. Usually a lot of mayo, too much cheese, but I've got here a fabulous wrap, which is a Caesar salad. Now, it's Caesar salad, better name for it is heart attack on a plate, but not the way I make it. I take my romaine lettuce. Instead of uh, just leaving it like that, I add some grilled shrimp in or chicken. It doesn't really matter. You could even use 
delicious tofu. And then my Caesar dressing is fabulous without adding all the excessive calories you'd get in a restaurant. And then we've got an edamame salad. And edamames are the whole rage. And what's great is that you can buy frozen shelled edamames in most major supermarkets. So I just boil them up, rinse them with really cold water so they keep that gorgeous green color, and mix it with a little charred corn. It's a great ingredient in healthy eating because you just take canned corn, saute it, get all the moisture out of it so it doesn't taste like canned corn and it feels like it's just came off the barbecue. Throw in some red bell peppers already. You see when you look at this dish the gorgeous colors. And to this a little sesame oil, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, some ginger, some garlic. The other recipe I have is a wild rice and brown rice pilaf. Now rice pilafs can be a side dish, the main dish, put some grilled chicken on it or I even use them to stuff turkeys or chickens during the Christmas season or Thanksgiving. But the key again is not to use too much oil. So this rice pilaf has just one tablespoon of olive oil, but then I increase some flavor by adding a little bit of sesame oil, orange juice concentrate, balsamic vinegar, garlic, and I throw in some pecans, dried cranberries, dried apricots, so the color is festive as well. Once again, it's a fundraiser for the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation. I've been writing books for them since 1993 when I began, and hoping that I could raise a few thousand dollars, I stand here now telling you I've raised over a million dollars. So it's a wonderful feeling to do it. Breast cancer is a very frightening disease that I'm hoping will be conquered in my lifetime.